Well, hello, I'm Mark Howe and welcome to my shop. Hey guys, I'm Mark Howe and welcome to my machine shop. Today I have a little midweek project for an upcoming video shoot. I need to make one of these cheapo camera tripod base plates and I'm gonna be making that out of the stock of nylon 6.6. So I thought I'd bring you along for the project. Let's get to it then. Now for the more expensive tripods, these are quite easy to find. You can get them from your suppliers and you get the aftermarket quick change systems, which is pretty cool because if you have more than one camera, you can have one of these base plates attached to every single camera or different piece of equipment and you can hot swap them to the tripod. Typically for the cheaper tripods, that's not really an option. So today I'm gonna to be making my own. So we're gonna start with the part chucked up in the three jaw on the mill table and we'll be using the fly cutter to just deck off the top to get a nice smooth surface to start from. All right guys, so just a quick mill tip. I know this one really helped me out. So to quickly find the center of your part in the mill, you really just have to edge find two points on the X axis. The middle of those points will give you the center point to edge find for the Y axis. Once you find the center of the Y axis, you can always come back and check your X axis, but that should get you pretty damn close. All right, and just like that, we have zero, zero of the center of our part. Now, the last trick we have to remember is that once we found center line, we still need to account for the diameter of the end mill. So what we gotta do is factor in the diameter of whatever our end mill is and have the DRO correspond to those measurements. Alright, so stage one is complete and to spec, I got my little drawing pegged above the mill so I can see it at all times. DRO is reading well. We're going to move on to stage two now, which is going to be doing in this dovetail. So first we're going to rough out the general profile. I got my little bracketed measurements there. And then we're going to do that. Then we're going to come in and get the dovetail on here. Okay, so what I'm going to be using here for measuring the dovetail is the two pin method and what that entails is taking two pins that are roughly the size that fit your dovetail and measuring across them ideally with micrometers but a dowel caliper will be just fine. Now I'm using this as a direct measurement to see just how much more I need to take off with my cuts but there is a mathematical formula where you can infer your female dovetail from your male dovetail and vice versa. It's only a little bit of math and it's actually not that bad, it looks more daunting than it is. But let me show you a simpler method. Okay, so if you only have the female part of your dovetail, what I like to do is I like to measure this up in CAD first, and I measure the top opening of my tripod, which will give me the dimension Y. Then by measuring the height, or rather the depth of the bottom part, that gives me H. And then knowing that this is 60 degrees, we can constrain it in our CAD program, and we will get X spit out back at us. Now you can obviously do this mathematically, but this is just a quick and dirty method to get you in the ballpark. And whatever you do, don't forget to test frequently. This fit came out pretty nicely. It fits nice and snug, and it's gonna be in there pretty solid. It's a strange perspective on the mill though. So there she is, all ready to be parted off. Now I was gonna use the handsaw to build some character, but I thought I'd be safer, and I'd use the machines. All right, so that turned out pretty well. This is the original that I showed you guys at the start of the video, and this is the one that I've just finished making. All rounded off with its corners, and uh, yeah, dovetail fits snug, and this is the screw I made. Now, this screw is a little bit longer than the normal ones. Typically, these are only about five mil tall. This is quite a bit longer to fit my 3D printed camera accessory cages that I'm busy working with, which I'll show you guys later. But Mark, I hear you say, don't you have a 3D printer? Why can't you just print your own? And au contraire, my friends, I already have printed some of my own. First one was a failed attempt, second one didn't quite fit. Third one actually was printed out of PLA and it failed on me. Luckily though, the nut that I had on there at the time managed to sandwich the failed plate to the base of this larger print and hold it all together until I could get it off the tripod and to safety. To be fair, that original PLA print failed because there was a bit of a Z seam that was 
just slightly wrong along here and that's where it failed right down the middle unfortunately. So the two things that really matter are one, wall thickness and two, your seam orientation. I tend to print these camera mounts standing upright on the print bed rather than that way. The reason being, as you can see, the print lines will run along and it'd be a little bit stronger than if you were to print it this way. I'm concerned that with all the weight of the camera on the tripod, that if your connection isn't strong enough, these two might just separate suddenly and catastrophically and test gravity with your camera equipment, something you generally don't want to do. So this is PTG. I've not tried it yet, but for a full on DSLR kit with a Rode microphone, it should be plenty strong enough. Just for what I'm doing with my fancy camera rigs, I've got lights on there, I've got microphones, I've got extra battery packs. It gets way too heavy and I'm just not trusting it. Hence why I decided to make these parts out of nylon. And so far, I think this is plenty strong enough. I would definitely recommend this, but printed plates are definitely an alternative if you do not have all the machine tools to make them yourself. As for the actual hardware screw, you don't have to make your own. If you are in the States, quarter 20 hardware is really easy to find. If you're outside the States, you can always find these at bolt suppliers. You just have to ask them for a quarter 20 unified national course bolt, and then you can hacksaw it and grind it to suit. Okay, okay, enough talking, it's time to test fit. So there we go, we got the PTG part. That's on there. Nice and snug, as expected. Now for this piece, the screw is obviously too long for my camera, so what I'm gonna do is take the original storeboard one, mount it to my second DSLR, and then take this little camera cage that I have made and 3D printed. Now this is pretty cool, it's just 3D printed PLA, it's got a dovetail in there. And then it's got laser cut aluminium handles. So we're going to mount our camera on there. That then can screw on. And get snug down. And now the reason I needed so much extra strength is because this thing, when it's designed to be shooting, gets a little light up here. So then I can mount a camera and my microphone, which is why you guys are getting a voiceover for the segment. But I mean, come on, the shot was totally worth it. Okay guys, so we're starting small, literally making our own equipment to make this channel possible. So if you feel like being around for the long term, consider subscribing, hit the like button at least, leave a positive comment, let me know what cool projects you're working on because I really love hearing about other people's projects, they inspire me to do more cool things in my own shop. But anyway, I appreciate your time, I've been Mark Howe, and thanks for watching.